Hi, everybody. I'm Scott Case. I'm the founding CEO of the Startup America Partnership, and I'm the founding chief technology officer for Priceline.com. And I'm here uh, as part of the Wall Street Journal Startup of the Year. So why don't I turn it over to you, John, and uh, introduce yourself and then uh, talk a little bit about Speak. Sure. Um, yeah, my name's John Bracken. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Speak.com. Um, I have been involved with startups uh, since the early days of Evite, uh, which most of you have probably heard of, and uh, other communication products such as AIM. Uh, so uh, Speak is the simplest and easiest conference calling solution on the market today. Uh, we tr transitioned the experience from an old school phone number and a pin to a speak link that's personal to you, so mine's speak.com slash John. And I can join any, any speak call with a click of a button um, from the web or a mobile phone. Um, and we saw things like who's on the line, knowing who's talking, knowing identities of users, um, and just doing some simple collaboration. So I have a, I, let me start with a question that I'm going to give you a softball because I'm going to get harder a little bit later. But um, it's unclear to me what your business model is. Like, how do you guys make money right now? Your product, you know, I have a Speak account. I've been using it, um, uh, and uh, I, you know, I've never been asked to sign up for anything. I don't know what your business model is. Happy to use the service, but talk to me about what you guys think. Who you think your core customer is, and uh, and what your revenue model is going to be. It's really quite simple. Um, Speak is. Uh... We have a free, it's a freemium model, so you can use it for free. Anybody can go get their own speak line um, and begin to use it. But you can also have a premium account, and we call it a speak pro. Uh, so if you want to have a larger call, so uh, above five users, or you want a premium feature such as call recording, you can, you can go pro, and, and it costs $10 a month. Um, it's really simple. It's very similar to Dropbox or Evernote or other uh, SaaS-based services that people use in business. Um, in terms of our market, we're really focused on the small business user um, and, and people in business who, who ha tend to have lots of conference calls. Um, so whether you're a consultant or you're in legal or you're in the finance or venture community um, uh, or just in, anybody in business or, uh, who needs to have a conference call, this is a great service for you. Um, and so we really target kind of the, uh, the small businesses. All right, so you're a little all over the place there because it's kind of like, you know, which small businesses is it, it, it and what do you mean by small? And, um, and in particular, what do you think your ratio to premium to paid is going to be? What do you need that to be? What's your current cost of acquisition on the premium side? Talk to me more about the economics around, around that strategy. Sure. Um, so we charge $10 a month uh, per user. Um, and... Uh, you know, the, the, way, the way it works is, you know, or you can do it a yearly count um, with a little bit of a discount. Um, and so our, our product, um, the one thing difference between our product and the traditional conference calling service, it has this viral mechanism where it can grow via web tactics. So we actually don't have to spend a great deal of money on, on a, in our marketing efforts. Uh, so we really focus on delighting the user uh, with a great product. And then in, when they use it, they share it via kind of a meeting invite. And so mo most of our active users today actually have a joined speak because they are on a speak call. And so that's really a, a core element, uh, attractive element of our business model. Right, but you still have a cost of to acquire. At some level, there's some cost. You had to get those first customers converting them from from a freemium to paid so yes it's it it, it has that viral kind of nature to it uh, and some network effects tied to it but what's your conversion rate when you know what percentage of the people who join a speak call become a member what percentage of those members those users become ultimately paid users what's that funnel look like so, tell me those three basically two conversions yeah, yeah so typically the way it works if it's you you join unregistered users who join a speak call uh, about 20% will actually register, um, and then a percentage of those will actually go on and become active users. Um, so uh, we have this great uh, viral. And conversion. at that point, those but those still aren't customers yet. That's right. They're not paying you. Yet. So we just we just offered okay. our pro service about mid-May, and uh, already we have four percent of our active user base um, who have gone pro, and that's with not a lot of time and effort. 
I think it, it's, you know, at 5%, it becomes an attractive business model, but I do think uh, we can get above 10% of our free users to go pro. Okay, so you think that, that the basic model is gonna be um, set, you know, if you get 4% of your active users and you've got, you know, you've got a small percentage of the people who are gonna be on your system are actually gonna be paying for you. And so you still have to be able to scale for all those people, those free riders like me, who aren't going to spring for the 10 bucks a month anytime soon because I'm only doing conference calls with two or three people on my team, for example. Right. Here's the thing. So I've been trying to use the thing, and I probably have, I would say, 50% of the time I have a speak service failure, right, where the call doesn't come through. I, I literally had a call this morning with a, an investor um, where we had to call him on his mobile, we had to conference somebody in using the iPhone, right? Where it just didn't work. Like they couldn't hear me, I couldn't hear them. I could see them registered, but they weren't they weren't active on there. So as you're, so I guess there's two pieces here. One is I'm sure you're figuring it out, but you need to get to a place where that service level is really really high. I can't use it on a day to day basis if it's not a 99.999 percent service reliability because I can't can't build it into my business process. So. Where are you in getting the technology at that level, number one? And number two, um, how are you going to support all those free users? Because you have a real challenge and that you've got to have real-time service. It's, it's not like Evernote where it's like, well, if I type in some notes and it takes a while for it to sync, it'll eventually get there. Right? But you need to work right then because i got people on the line. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody's dialing in. You're absolutely right, Scott. Um... It's, it's, it's a meeting product. It's um, used at the center of some of the most important kind of events in your business life. Um, and so service levels are key. Uh, it's, it's incredibly important. Um, we care a great deal about um, our, you know, our downtime and having it work. And not only just work, but work across every platform that we might use um, on the web, on your smartphone, um, on a tablet, or just a plain old phone. Um, and so that is probably one of the largest challenges we have as, as a company, is dealing with that issue. Um, and I, look, I tell you, it's our number one concern, and it's always been our number one focus. What we do is, quite simply, it's hard. Um, but we're uh, hiring the best team possible, and we have really great, uh, talented people. Some of which just joined the last few months. And uh, you know, I have no doubt we're going to have industry standard uptime, and uh, you know, there's no. We're going to figure it out and build a best in class uh, service. Um, so, but, you know, clearly, um, you know, there's something that uh, you know your is the fact that you had an issue is unacceptable. So, you know, we need to solve that for you and provide great customer support uh, to help you through these issues uh, moving forward. So. You know, hopefully you had a chance to kind of interact with Virginia and our team to kind of help you through that and uh, kind of, because we, we definitely don't want to disappoint. So, so I think here's a couple of things for you to think about as we, as, uh, as we take the next step together on this stuff. So I think that service level uptime is really important. And this blend of how, um, of, of how many free riders you have versus paid customers and making sure that you have reliability and you have capacity within your system, specifically to make sure that your your paid customers are served well, but also that your um, your highly likely customers to convert are going to be are going to have a, a, a high level of uptime. And and you know it's a tricky problem because you really want to serve everybody because you don't know who's going to be moving through that funnel. But this notion of those kind of ratios between that top of the funnel and the bottom, and having too many at the top that suck up a lot of your capacity. For your best customers is something you guys really need to think about, and then the, then sort of an action at the product level that that I, I would have you guys work on is um, when you see a call that clearly is way too short for it to be a real call, there should be some mechanism. I had no feedback mechanism to give you guys a hey that didn't work. Right? There was no way for any of us to sort of say this this didn't function for us right now, and so you have no log of it. You don't know that it didn't happen. You don't. You don't have any mechanism there. So I think a feedback mechanism would be really, really important. And that's more of a tactical piece on the product. But I'd love to see you guys come back with a much clearer strategy for how you're going to manage those uptimes and maybe bring fewer customers on to make sure that you're maintaining a high level of service the whole time as you build out the capacity in the back end. And you may have to fire some free riders to keep your capacity levels high. You know, so you should fire me. Hey, look, you've used this 20 times. 
right? We can't keep you, you know, on here for free if you're because we can't afford to do that. And I'd be okay with that. Hey, if you used it 20 times, it's been really reliable. Great, start charging. Right, right. No, that's that's great advice. I think it's completely fair. So thank you for that. This is what you need to do as a startup: is that if you can't be bulletproof and reliable, people who are going to want to take a risk on you are going to have a hard time continuing to take that risk. So you have me as a customer because. I'm a maniac and I love you guys and I want you to be successful, but you know, you need a lot of people like me to be using this on a regular basis. So the next time we get together, I'd love to see a little bit more about how you're going to manage the growth rate that you have. And maybe the next time we do a cast like this, we should talk about how you get to scale and how you do it carefully enough so that everybody has a great service experience as you go. Excellent. Sound like a good next step. All right. So I, I haven't talked to Virginia yet, so you should ever call me. I, I will. Absolutely. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you.